I'm Henry Auer, and I publish my global warming blog at this internet address. This video will ask the question, does burning fossil fuels cause global warming? And we'll do that by looking at uh, these questions. Is the long-term global average temperature increasing? We'll uh, ask whether the atmospheric CO2 concentration is increasing. We'll ask whether burning fossil fuels adds CO2 to the atmosphere. And we'll inquire whether burning fossil fuels uh, is a contributing factor to global warming. So first we'll look at measuring the average global temperature. Currently that's done uh, by uh, using data from all these weather stations. Contemporary world climate stations, each, each red dot is one such station, gathers data, including temperature and precipitation and other weather-related information, uh, all the time. And uh, uh, over the long-term periods of a year or more, this information is gathered, averaged, and results in uh, a number which is the long-term worldwide global average temperature. Now, before the time that uh, humans had thermometers and could actually make uh, real-time measurements of temperature, climate scientists have determined that there are some geochemical proxies for temperature which can be used, uh, recorded in the geological record, uh, which serve as, 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 uh, as substitute thermometers, if you will. And using them we can establish temperatures going back thousands of years, in fact, many hundreds of thousands of years. A directly related question is whether the atmospheric CO2 concentration is increasing. Direct measurements have been made uh, of CO2 in the atmosphere since 1958, and for times before that, climate scientists are using air bubbles trapped in glaciers that are obtained uh, where uh, they uh, take ice cores from the glaciers uh, which are deposited in layers year by year and uh, air bubbles trapped in the glaciers from snow falling and being compressed give the CO2 concentration present in the air at the time that that particular layer was formed. Uh, these ice cores go back for thousands of years, in fact uh, many tens of thousands of years. And the results look like this. The uh, global average temperature is the blue line, uh, and it's a little bit jagged, but it's been showing an increasing trend starting in 1880 and going up to the present time, in fact, uh, up to 2004, and in fact continues to increase even uh, to the present time. And that's recorded on the scale at the right in degrees Fahrenheit. And as you see, it's uh, increased from about 56.7 degrees Fahrenheit, long-term annual global average, to 57.9, and still increasing. The colored lines are the CO2 concentrations in the atmosphere. The yellows are the direct uh, measurements from CO2 in the atmosphere that I mentioned, uh, starting in 1958 and continuing to the present time. Uh, in, as of 2004, this showed about 375 parts per million of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere uh, uh, per air, parts per million per air, uh, and um, and it's, that too is increasing uh, as uh, as we continue uh, living up to the present and will continue to increase. The red uh, lines come from the ice core air bubble CO2 information. So you see it's a continuous increase from uh, about 280 before the Industrial Revolution began. As I say, up to the present time, it's over 390 parts per million. And uh, these trends uh, have been measured, uh, uh, shown here, going back for 1,000 years to the year 1000, up to the present time. And as you see, uh, both the carbon dioxide and the temperature are essentially constant for most of that thousand year period and only started increasing during the Industrial Revolution. Both the carbon dioxide concentration from the air bubbles and from direct measurements and the proxy and actual uh, 
temperature measurements, uh, both start increasing only uh, during the time of the Industrial Revolution. Now, um, I've called uh, the use of fossil fuels uh, the one-way carbon arrow. Since the Industrial Revolution began, um, humans have been extracting carbon-containing fossil fuels from the Earth, burning them and ejecting the CO2 into the atmosphere. And that trend has been growing and increasing uh, as time passes. Uh, it's a one-way arrow because the carbon is passing from uh, depositories deep in the Earth and being released as CO2 into the atmosphere. Currently, there's no known way of efficiently capturing CO2 from the atmosphere or capturing it uh, right after burning and before release into the atmosphere, taking that CO2 and reintroducing it back into the Earth so that it doesn't enter the atmosphere. As a result, in the lower graph here, uh, the amount of carbon dioxide released into the atmosphere from burning fossil fuels has been steadily increasing during the Industrial Revolution. This graph extends from 1750 up to the present time, and as you see, as the Industrial Revolution um, developed and started uh, requiring more and more energy use, more and more fossil fuels have been burned, and the trend is increasing. That increasing trend would seem to explain the increase in atmospheric measured uh, uh, CO2 concentrations. So there's a strong suggestion here that burning fossil fuels uh, uh, is responsible for the increase in the carbon dioxide over this 150-year period. So the question is, does, this, uh, does the increasing, increase in carbon dioxide concentration come from fossil fuels? And there is a measurable physical property of carbon dioxide, um, which is a little uh, complicated, and I've chosen not to uh, explain it in this short uh, video. It's called uh, the carbon isotope ratio. And that shows that uh, CO2 obtained by burning fossil fuels differs in this property from the CO2 that already exists as present in the atmosphere. So you can distinguish one from the other. And this uh, property, this uh, uh, carbon isotope ratio property, tracked over 1,000 years from the year 1000 AD up to the present time, has been a relatively st steady constant over that period of time and then shown a sharp decrease on this graph uh, in the direction that uh, corresponds to what you'd expect if the CO2 that's uh, being uh, measured uh, is obtained from burning fossil fuels. So this downward dip is uh, attributed to the appearance of uh, fossil fuel derived carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And if we now juxtapose the two graphs, the one you saw before, for the thousand year period, we see that all three curves are essentially flat until the Industrial Revolution begins. And we now can see that this observed increase in carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere is directly attributable to uh, carbon dioxide originating from burning fossil fuels, uh, shown uh, by this uh, physical property that's been measured for carbon dioxide. And as we say, uh, as we've seen, uh, the uh, temperature has also been correlated, uh, increasing in a correlated fashion. Now, uh, does the increase in temperature actually come about because of the carbon dioxide? Climate uh, carbon dioxide being a greenhouse gas and retaining the heat uh, uh, in the atmosphere from solar radiation. Climate scientists have developed global climate models which permit predicting temperature and other properties uh, as a result of greenhouse gases and other effects that are present in the atmosphere. The black line is the same temperature, uh, observed measured temperature that we uh, saw in previous slides, except now it's plotted every five years instead of every single year, so it takes out some of the jaggedness, some of the roughness, it's smoother. But it's the same data. The blue band is the result uh, obtained uh, by uh, prediction obtained um, if the global climate models do not include 
the carbon dioxide originating from burning fossil fuels. And as we see, the blue band fails to predict the observed uh, increase in temperature in recent decades. But if climate models now uh, include the additional carbon dioxide that has been uh, released into the atmosphere in the trends that we saw in the previous slides, the climate models uh, predict quite accurately the increase in temperature. So because of this direct comparison without and with we can now directly ascribe the increase in temperature to the fact that carbon dioxide has been increasing in the atmosphere and, that, and we've seen that that carbon dioxide originates by burning fossil fuels. So this video has shown, indeed, burning fossil fuels does cause global warming. And this is because we've shown that the long-term global average temperature is increasing. Uh, the atmospheric concentrations of carbon dioxide have been increasing in recent decades. That increased carbon dioxide originates by burning fossil fuels. And the burning of fossil fuels, uh, we've shown by the global climate models, is a major contributing factor to global warming. So in coming um, videos, uh, we'll talk about some of the effects that uh, increased carbon that, in, that global warming has uh, on our planet.